continuing from what we discussed yesterday about programming, right? And how we're being programmed through what we see with our eyes, through what we hear with our ears, through what we touch, through what we, we taste with our mouths. But remember, programming begins earlier than that. One may think that programming begins in adulthood simply because that's when you knew about it. No, no, no. It began before you even knew about it. And sometimes even the information that you have that is supposedly going to expose the, the, the shadow governments, that's supposedly going to expose the matrix, a lot of that information comes from the same people who are programming us. You know that it's called controlled opposition. So instead of waiting for people to wake up and oppose what they're trying to do, they pick their own heroes and superheroes and politicians to be opposition, knowing very well that they are the same thing. So programming starts at a very early age. Actually, it begins before we are even born, man. There's people who in, uh, invest billions of dollars towards studies that are directed towards embryology. They try to understand human nature even before humans are born. By the time a child is born, they already have a burden on their back. They have to go to some hospital to get vaccinated. Hmm? Regardless of how healthy they are, they have to get vaccinated. They have to be registered. They must have an ID, which is basically like a barcode number. You see, they must belong to some kind of political structure, which is basically a country. So in reality, we are all not born free. We may convince ourselves that we're free. We may be programmed to think that we're free, but we are not. Uh, Americans have this saying that, oh, the land of the brave and free, blah, 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 blah. Far from it. A lot of them have opinions that they didn't even choose to have. They think they chose to have those opinions, but it's literally because of the information that's been put to them. A lot of them have problems with Middle Eastern countries. Hmm? A lot of them hate certain religions simply because of what they've been programmed to believe. They even hate Africans. They are. They say you're going to give them Ebola. Exactly. When Ebola was developed in the United States of America, when AIDS was developed in the United States of America by the Americans, and all of a sudden it's the Africans now who have the disease. Same thing in China. Remember, in Guangzhou, during the Wuhan virus, uh, coronavirus situation, they blamed the Africans there that it's these Africans who are infecting us. When the virus started in China, developed in a lab in China, but then it's the Africans now. So those people are all programmed. They are all victims and they love it. It's not like they don't want to, they want to be like that. A lot of them want to be like that. It's like the whole situation with the Israelites coming out of Egypt and they're complaining that ah, at least in Egypt, we used to eat nice, you know. Now in this desert, all we have to do is eat this manna. Take us back to Egypt, Moses. Oh, Moses, take us back. They wanted to be slaves. They wanted to be oppressed because they had short, short sight. And that's the thing with human beings. So this programming starts at a very young age, man. By the time you are, you are born, you are told that there's some white guy who wants to save you called Jesus. You are told that, ah, white is good and black is, is bad. Eh? White is right and black is wrong. Hmm? The white color, ah, the best ever. The black color, the worst ever. All those things kids are taught it from a young age. And you know, there's proven scientific data, man, that between the ages of 0 to 12 and the ages of 0 to, 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 to 7, at least, majority of the child's personality is formed in those years. It's hard to teach a 19-year-old uh, teenager something new. So majority of programming is, is very effective when the child is younger, before they reach the age of 12. And I think that's why there's so much investment towards uh, animation and cartoons. You see, I've been watching a lot of movies. Ne? Movies are very boring, man. And you know, the creators of those films are very lazy. It's like, I mean, there's nothing special about movies anymore. And then I started watching animation, man. And then I realized how much money is put in towards creating those things, man. You see, and a lot of people who watch those things are children. Obviously, there's a lot of adults who watch them. But I mean, primarily, especially back in the day, it used to be children, you know. And when you listen to the language that's used, the storyline, you realize, no, man, this is not content for kids, man. This is not content for kids. So that kind of content infiltrates the children's mind. It formulates and influences how they shape their perception of reality, how they view the world. Because a lot of those kids are before the age of 12. 
By the time they're 13, 14, 15, they get to high school, they already have a formulated per perception of how the world is. And majority of that is not from necessarily their parents or their family. But a lot of that is from what they see on TV, what they see on the phone. You see? So that kind of programming is what I'm talking about, man. You program kids by what they see and what they don't see. Look at how people are so negative towards marriage these days. And there's a lot of reasons for that. I'm not saying I know all the answers. There's a lot of reasons for that. For that. But one of the main things about marriage is that any society that has a strong family unit, that's a strong society, right? So if you break up the family unit, you desensitize people from respecting marriage and the sacredness of marriage and the union between the feminine and the masculine, then that society is easy to, you know, control. It's easy to manipulate. So with regards to marriage for me, I think women still want to get married. I think the majority of people who are skeptical towards marriage are male. male. There's a reason for that. That's why I said there's a lot of reasons why marriage is not people's favorite these days. There's a lot of reasons. And part of it is because of the structural privileges that women have in marriages. A lot of men are not very rich and powerful. A lot of men are hardworking individuals who get married. But then majority of divorces are initiated by women. At least in the United States of America, 70% of divorces are initiated by women. You see? And majority of those divorces end up with women getting things they didn't even work for. So it's almost like men are getting a bad, a bad deal. Even worse when there's children involved. Almost in many, many majority of cases, women are going to get um, the rights to, to the kids. They're going to get custody, whereas men will have to fight for it. And most of the time, they, they lose that custody. So there is a systemic, um, you know, discrimination towards men when it comes to marriage and the litigation of marriage. And a lot of lawyers these days, they even advise men not to even fight for custody because they know they'll lose money, man. Those cases are the most expensive, you see, where men have to fight for their kids after marriage. Whereas it was the women who initiated the divorce, you see. So I think a lot of men have become sort of like fed up of that, you know, having to get married to people. And then five years later, less than five years later, actually, you know, they already lost half of everything they worked for. Actually, more than half because they even lose their kids. You see, even men with money, men, a lot of them lose their kids. But I'm not saying that it's all a woman's fault, right? I'm not saying it's a woman's fault. What I'm saying is that society is inclining towards a marriage-less uh, 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 way of life. And it affects children heavily. Because when children don't grow around their mothers and fathers, who are their face, first point of reference, their first gods on earth, when they don't grow around that, then they find alternative uh, ways of you know uh, receiving parenting and part of what they use or what they use to get that so according to you bro mm. why is marriage important society nation building giving birth to children so as a species man human beings the species we are here on earth to build, right? We're here to build, not just build physical structures, but to build bonds as well. That's why everything about us is social. Everything about us, even eye contact, without even talking to another human being, just by looking at their eyes, you feel something special. Or you feel something suspicious. You can tell just by interacting, just by, you know, without saying a word, because we are very social. Or physical contact, man, you know? When you're walking next to someone and you touch them physically, you already, there's a sense of interaction that you feel with them. So we are a primarily social species. And social is the root for society. In order to build society, we need to socialize. In order to socialize, there has to be human beings. In order for there to be human beings, there has to be people born. In order for there to be people born, there has to be intima int um, intimacy. In order for there to be intimacy, there has to be relationships. And you build relationships by forming them. And one of the primary and core ways of forming relationship is through commitment, which is what the institution of marriage provided. It provided commitment and a public declaration of commitment. That's why when you, mar when you marry someone, you don't marry them in some corner somewhere, but you bring both families and you commit 
publicly that I'm committed to this individual. We will socialize together. We will give birth to other human beings who will socialize and build a society. So marriage is at the core of human existence. Because without marriage, then there's no public declaration of commitment. And therefore, there's no burden of commitment. That's why now people can have five children with five different women and not raise any of them. What that does is that it's counterproductive to our primary objective of interacting and socializing. Raising children is a way of socializing because you prepare them to be humans as well, to go and socialize with others and to repeat the cycle. And that's what we call living now. You are living an experience. And without that structure of a family, that family unit, there is no society. There is absolutely no society without a family. A family is actually a mini version of society. It's like a class. You know? In programming, there's something we call a class. And then you have instances of a class. That's what families are. They are literally instances of a society. And any society that doesn't have strong families is not a society. Look at the American, um, American culture right now. You see, it's one of the worst cultures and the most toxic cultures in the world. It's an individualistic culture. Hmm? It's all about the individual. And therefore, everyone is against the next person. You go to New York, you can't even greet a person on the road. When you greet them, it's like you are violating them. You can't even look at a person for more than three seconds. Apparently, you are harassing them when you look at them. Looking is part of human socialization. You have to socialize with other human beings and you start by looking at them, having a smell, sensing their smell, touching. I'm not saying you touch people without permission. What I'm saying is that touching is a fundamental part of human interaction. And without all of those things, right? touching, looking, speaking, smelling, and all those senses, without any of them, then we might as well bring an end to human interaction. Why do you think there were so many suicides and depressions during the whole lockdown thing? Because people were cut off from other people. Human beings want to exist with other human beings. Human beings are not made up to be alone. Hmm? They are created to exist. And when you program people to detach from that, then you're programming people to destruction and poverty. Poverty of experience. You have a poor experience of life. You see? So now, and that interaction and socialization is not just limited to human beings. Even with trees, man, you have to touch trees. You have to step on the grass. Don't always put shoes on. Step on the grass. I remember there's a guy, DJ Smoo, he was hugging trees. Hug them if you have to. Eat vegetables, eat fruits, drink water, breathe the air. Hmm? Breathe the air, wear your, your skins and your, your fabrics from the, from the ground. That's why, that's how we are, man. We are, we, we are part of the ecosystem. And when you detach human beings from that and you put them in blocks called flats and apartments and you treat them some, as some kind of mechanical uh, robot, then human beings start to be disintegrated. They start to behave in, in abnormal ways. You have mass shootings. You have great suicide rates. You have people being con confused with their identity. You see, there's a lot of dysphoria and uh, lack of clarity of why they are there. But then when you go to societies that tend to live a more seemingly primitive way of life, those societies are the most fulfilled because they are more connected to who they are and their environment. That is the matrix. That is the real matrix. We are born in the matrix. Literally, the womb is the matrix. When you get out of the womb, you go to the matrix called Earth. But then they don't want you to live in that matrix. They want you to live in their own matrix, in tall skyscraper buildings with absolutely no nature. They want you to eat their own food that will soon be 3D printed. They want you to eat their own milk that's being sucked and milked somewhere in some factory with blood all over it. They want you to eat their own cows that are depressed and abused from when they were younger. They want you to eat their own chickens that are full of hormones and being fed, uh, uh, you know, uh, chemical substances that are dangerous for a human body. That is their matrix. But the natural matrix from which you come and with which you are yourself, the natural matrix, it, it literally complements you. The natural matrix is the greater electromagnetic sphere within which we exist. And you are an electromagnetic being yourself living within that matrix. You are part of that matrix. But when they detach you from that matrix, then you lose your power. You lose your balance. You lose your equilibrium. And then they tell you how to exist now. No, 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 you must not live like this. That's a primitive way. You must live this way, though. This is the most uh, scientifically proven way. But you realize, ah, ah, no, man. No, this scientifically proven way is actually having negative effects. So that's what is happening here. When we talk about programming in the matrix, 
they remove you from the natural program which is your program into their own program and their own program is not necessarily good for you so that's why they program kids from a young age they put vaccines in in them you no longer feed kids now natural foods grass not grass like roots and vegetables uh -uh. kids are fed some silly like nestum uh, what do you call them porridge those things that they feed babies now when i was young i didn't eat any of that okay they did feed me some purity uh, nonsense garbage but when i was young man you used to go out there you look for certain plants you take their roots you mix with water and you grind and you mix kids have certain things that they should eat from nature from a young age they grow up in contact with nature one with nature because they are nature you see ah uh, this day is not like that man they don't even get their uh, breast their milk from the mother's breasts there's things that mothers use now to suck and milk the breast uh, the milk out and then they store it in bottles and now kids have to drink from those bottles and you wonder why children are so broken nowadays children don't have any connection with their parents they don't even recognize the authority of their parents because they were raised by television they were raised by mobile phones they were raised by cartoons and animation they were not raised by their parents and that's the danger of programming so what is your ideal type of marriage marriage is very simple man very very simple not easy but simple My ideal type of marriage is a marriage that ba that's based on pure commitment and loyalty and understanding the bigger picture. That this is not about feelings or trends or what society says. This is about building a fully functional society within your home. You are literally the king in your home. Why do you think we call wives in our culture, we call them mkosikas, which means female king? Think about that literally queen yes why because the man is in ghost of the house in ghost the father of the house and the, you put the cars, is that it, that it is makes feminine? it feminine yes and the word ghost in and of itself means lion in the congo and what does a lion do it has a pride a lion has a pride and there's only one male in that pride there are multiple females but there's one male and the pure purpose of that pride is to make children raise those children when they are grown up you take the children especially the boys you send them out to do the same so that we can have a bigger territory so my ideal marriage is a marriage that's based on understanding that we are building here yes there's love because we are humans we have vibrations love is a very high vibration it's a good vibration it's a good energy field when there's love man love is a powerful force so there's love, not feelings, love, pure dedication and commitment. So for me, a marriage is where the woman understands her duty to serve me with all her entirety. And I understand my duty to serve her and the children. I put myself on the line for her and the children. And she puts herself on the line for me, right? So I'm like, the, 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 I'm covering everyone with my masculinity in full force. I'm not, I'm not going to be with a woman who calls my masculinity toxic masculinity. That's a woman who needs help. She needs help from the Hollywood programming. That's the need therapy there. Calling masculinity toxic masculinity. It's only masculinity when it serves you. When it doesn't serve you, it's toxic. Not, not, people with those ideas are not ready for marriage. Marriage is about service, my brother. It's commitment. That's what marriage is. You serve the other person. You are one with them. And for me, that's my idea. You can't tell me that you're married, but then you still seek your own. You have to let go of yourself. I'm not saying lose your personality, no. But let go of self-interest. Hmm? Let go of self-interest. Let go of selfishness. Put yourself down. Both men and women. This is not just for the women. Or it's for the men and the women. But the women must understand the masculine energy. That it's an energy of warfare. It's an energy of protection. It's an energy of offense. And the men must understand the feminine energy. That is an energy of nurturing. Hmm? It's an energy of comfort. It's an energy of love and sensuality. And we must be able to merge those nicely. Don't try to change the men into being feminine. Oh, we must be vulnerable. Hey, Baba. Vulnerable for what? Can't be vulnerable. Go out there in the world, Baba. It's a war. It's a jungle there. 
You become vulnerable, we tell you, come, be vulnerable with me, I'll show you flames. Hmm? Oh, please be vulnerable. You are trying to turn a man into a woman. Let the man be tough, my brother. Not to say he must not have feelings. He's a human being. He does have feelings. And he must channel that energy towards productive stuff. He must channel that energy towards building himself. So for me, that's, that's marriage, man. It's commitment. Making a vow. And a vow is a word that you can never go back against. It's like... If you read uh, the Bible or even the Quran or any other text, or let me say the Bible. I'm not going to talk about other ones. If you read the Bible, the scriptures, Sefer, it's like the, 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 the vows, man, that Abraham would make with Yah. You see, when he makes that vow, maybe, even if he made it 6,000 years ago, 6,000 years later, it still stands because that's marriage, my brother. You see, so marriage doesn't have an end. It doesn't end. Obviously, there are exceptions where the person is not, obviously, you know, well up here and he wants to kill you and all that then you have to save your life yes so for me that that's that's marriage but ultimately man i think it's about working together to raise a healthy family because remember when the man gets out of the house in the morning he must feel like he's a god when the woman gets out of the house in the morning she must feel like she's a goddess when the kids get out of the house in the morning they must feel like little gods not only feel but know. they know exactly because that they literally are even the bible says here yeah, are gods <laughs> oh yes, yes so that's the the kind of matrix people must cultivate in their homes a very conducive environment you see a very very conducive environment where they understand their teammates the leader yes we know who the captain is it's the man and if for you it's not the man then go to hell i'm not talking to you move look for another channel this is not the place for you there's no safe space here about how do we uh, how do we get out of the matrix? How do we escape the matrix? You are the matrix. How do you ex ex escape yourself? But you need to understand that. I mean the, the programming. Oh, the the, the programming, is, yeah. the external programming. Yes. Oh, my brother, it's hard. It's a lifelong journey as well. You see, because a lot of things, you have to search for them to find them. <laughs> there is an element of serendipity. Where you find things out, the more you, you are in this journey, the more you experience serendipity. Knowledge comes to you. But a lot of the times you have to be keen to find out what's happening. You see, there are people that you know, my brother, personally. If you would talk to them at this stage regarding where you are in life, you talk to them about the nature of how things work, they would think you are crazy, man. Confirm. Yeah, that's true. Man. Yes. There are people who would think you are crazy and you would see yourself as crazy as well because you realize I'm the only one who's like this, you see. So for those people, they're not going to see anything that we're talking about. Now you need to be patient. So we are like the prophets here. Hmm? We are the spokespeople, but that's what a prophet is, a spokesperson. The explainers, we, we, have, we have to teach and explain to people like what you and I are doing right now. Expand people's perspective and show them with evidence that this is how things are and, and, and all that. So how do we escape? We first have to understand the, the, the problem and the, the crisis we are in. And understanding means that you have to learn more about the real world now. Not about what you think is the real world. And be brave enough to think differently. Because I think that's one of the major issues. People are afraid of deviating from the group. You see, they are afraid of being inkomo a cow that eats alone, the lone wolf. They don't want to be like that. People want to go with the group. And the more agreeable you are, the more you want to be accepted, the more you want to fit in, the more likely you are to be part of the matrix. Because the matrix works like that. Head behavior, group behavior. You see? So you have to first learn about what's really happening. There's a lot of books and information. Also learn about what your culture has to say. You see? Because it also, it, it covers religion, it covers spirituality, it covers economics, it covers finance, it covers your health. Learn about all those aspects from a different perspective instead of from books. You see? Because books say the same thing. Now you should wonder who decided what books should say. It starts there, my brother. Why should you eat a certain amount of carbohydrates? Why should you eat a certain amount of protein? Why should you eat a certain amount of this or that? Who decided that? There's a chart that we used to have in primary school, a quarter of the meal must be meat, chicken, quarter of the meal. What if chicken is not good for my body? What should I eat? Those are the kind of questions you need to start asking. Go and find out what your culture has to say. Go and find out what other cultures have to say. 
what alternative sources of information has to say. You don't have to believe any of these things, but compare and contrast. So you need to be an active researcher to, in order to escape this illusion. And keep an open mind that everything you might know might very well be a lie. It's like there's an iron curtain and then there's a puppet master pulling the strings. But behind that iron curtain is where the real things are happening. And you must be able to break through that iron curtain. And it's an iron, so it's hard to break through. Which means there's a lot of unlearning and unwiring you need to do. And once you know that, this is what's happening. You need to learn more about yourself. That's the key. That's the key to elevating above this matrix. Because the power of this matrix is that it keeps you in lower energy states. Depression. Anger. Pleasure. Momentary pleasure for that matter. Not long-term joy and long-suffering and patience. Ah, uh ah. -uh. Momentary pleasure. Uh, trends. They keep you occupied with events such as uh, the World Cup, Olympics. You're always busy uh, enjoying these games. They keep you uh, in, under control with consumption. Eh? There's always a new fashion item. There's always a new product to test out. There's always a new car, a new video game. Those are the kind of things that keep you busy. You don't even have time to learn about who you are. Detach from everything. Learn about the power of your brain. How powerful is your mind? How deep can you go exploring your mind, both the conscious and the subconscious mind? How deep can you go in the metaphysical things of this world? Hmm? Are things the way they, people say they are? Now, when you start asking those questions and you draw back and start to turn inward towards yourself, eh, I promise you, that's where the power is when you learn about yourself. Because you then realize you are connected to a bigger force. You are connected to a bigger power than you think. And that bigger power is the key to beating this system out. You see? For example, it was Valentine's recently. And I see people buying roses, man. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? What are these roses supposed to signify? Because Valentine's has nothing to do with roses. You know, it's a sexual um, uh, sex, sex ritual from... Uh, it's an orgy, basically. It used to be a three-day orgy. Back in the day in Rome, uh, they used to sacrifice goats and dogs. And they would use the strips from the hides on the skin. They would beat the women up. And these guys would come and choose a woman to sleep with. And they would sleep with those women and they would have sex. That's what Valentine's is. St. Valentine's Day. In honor of a dead saint called Valentine. So, I see people buying roses. Oh, it's the day of love. Love. What has, it has nothing to do with love. It's the same thing with Christmas. People buying stuff. That's a matrix, man. It is the matrix. Trust me, the religion. It's a form of marketing. It is. And they market their own culture. They clothe it up in whatever it needs to be clothed up. I wouldn't be shocked if in the next uh, few years, man, there would be a Christmas that's themed with African cultures. Because obviously people want to see a black Santa Claus now. Santa Claus was never black. He was a white bishop. Sinterklaas or Saint Nicholas. A white man. He can't be black. But I'm sure people are going to cry for a black Santa Claus. You'll see a black Santa Claus. Oh, we want an African version. You'll see an African version. In fact, it, there shouldn't be Christmas at all. There shouldn't be Santa Claus at all. You don't need Santa Claus. Solve your own problems. Waiting for some Santa Claus to come and give you gifts. There is no Santa Claus. He died a long time ago. If anything, it's a demon. I give you ancestors are said to be a demon, right? Even Santa Claus, okay, it's a demon. It's a dead man. Why should people be celebrating a dead man? Hmm? So it's part of the matrix religion, the finance system. You know you have to save. Go to the bank, put your money in there. What if the bank collapses? What are you going to do? Do you have seeds to feed yourself? Do you have land to farm and mine and build? All you're worried about is putting money in the bank. That's the finance system. It's got you slaved and slaved up. You are a slave of the system. I'm done with the questions. Okay. So, in conclusion, my brother, this system is about consumption. And consumption is the power, a very powerful force to keep people in poverty. So our initial question was how this society is programming people to be poor through consumption. Even people who want to start businesses right? and they earn maybe let's say half a million and they think it's enough. You know why they think it's enough? They think it's enough because they can afford the things they want to consume. So when people don't understand the function of currency, 
as a unit of exchange. They think it's all about consumption. Ah, uh -uh, currency is just a unit of exchange. We can literally decide that our currency is gonna be these jackets. You know, that between the two of, of us, we buy with jackets. So if I want your phone, let's say your phone is worth two jackets. I'll give you two jackets, I get the phone. So that's what money is. It's a functional unit of exchange. But people don't understand that. They think it's just something for you to have and settle what you need to settle, whether it's debts or to buy products, and that's it. That's why when you speak to some people about the vision they have for their small business, you realize they don't have a vision because they think that, that business or that currency that they got was the end, whereas, in fact, it is a means to an end. It's a form of uh, purchasing ability so that you can do what you really want to do. So what you really want is not money, but the ability to get what you want. And money usually is the agreed upon uh, unit that we, we use, that's currency. So consumption is one of the most dangerous, it's actually a very dangerous thing, especially uncontrollable and unregulated consumption, because it breeds about laziness, comfort, uh, naivety, uh, delusion. When you consume too much of anything, you end up not being able to differentiate and you don't have your inspiration to create. And creation is actually a higher uh, skill set. When you start to create, it even fulfills you as an individual because you produce things out there that people are interested in, then people can consume. And people should do the same, produce things that you need. Whether you produce music, whether you produce art like drawings, whether you produce uh, poetry, whether you produce actual uh, items, inventory, production and creation are very important you see because it fulfills you and it makes you an interesting person and therefore to escape this matrix we need to look towards more knowing ourselves and finding out who you are finding out what you enjoy and finding out the greater force that made you who you are that created you the way you are and that will bring about inspiration to actually offer something to the world and that's the first step towards freeing yourself from this programming and from the matrix and raise your own children don't allow your children to be raised by the system or by schools or by government raise your children feed yourself clothe yourself take care of your wife and your kids take care of your husband take care of yourself love one another make sure everything you do is full of love and joy peace